Hi, welcome to Walking in Love. I'm Melissa Whitkey. We're continuing our study of the book of James. Welcome back. Thanks for joining me today. So we had gotten through, we were in chapter one up to verse seven. So we were going to uh, actually verse eight. So we're gonna start in verse nine. We started off by, by just an introduction about talking, you know, James jumps right in. He doesn't hesitate. Uh, chapter 1 verse 2 is where he starts telling us what we need to do and that we, we should be wholly joyful if we are enveloped in or facing trials in our lives um, or you know difficult circumstances I'm not sure you know how many people feel wholly joyful um, when they're faced with difficult situations but he says we are because it brings out endurance steadfastness and patience in each one of us and those are the things that we need to walk in faith. That's why those things are so important, to endure when we don't see the things we want, to, you know, patience is, you know, putting aside what we want oftentimes to help someone who's in front of us. Remember, we're here to serve others in love, and that takes patience, because people aren't going to all respond in, in an easy way oftentimes when we go to help people. So anyway, that's where we left off. Let's jump right back in. We're in verse, verse nine. Let the brother in humble circumstances glory in his elevation as a Christian called to the true riches and to be an heir of God. And the rich person ought to glory in being humbled by being shown his human frailty. Because like the flower of the grass, he will pass away. For the sun comes up with a scorching heat and parches the grass, its flowers fall off and its beauty fades away. Even so will the rich man wither and die in the midst of his pursuits. Blessed, happy to be envied is the man who is patient under trial and stands up under temptation. For when he has stood the test and been approved, he will receive the victor's crown of life, which God has, God has promised to those who love him. All right, let's, let's stop there for a minute and talk about what, what he's saying here. Let the brother in humble circumstances glory in his elevation. When you're in humbled circumstances, oftentimes you don't feel glory in his elevation. As a Christian called to the true riches and to be an heir of God. What he's saying is if you're in humble circumstances, rejoice. Understand that what you're being called to, the true riches and to be an heir of God, is worth more and more valuable than any amount of money, gold, silver, or anything on this planet. That's something that's hard for us as human beings to understand. What's really important is what he's saying here. What's really important is not riches, but the being an heir to God, to understanding that the true glory, the true blessing is from God. But then he goes on and talks about the rich people and he says, hey, rich people, you may think you got it all going on here, right? But be humbled and understand that one day you're here and the next day you're gone and you'll be in the midst of your pursuits and it'll all be over. All of this stuff that you've done here, you know, where you're kind of, you know, putting money first, money as your goal a lot of times, and you're forgetting about God and all of these gifts and how you're supposed to share and, and what we're supposed to do here. He says, be humbled and understand this. You're gonna wither away like the grass and the flower in the field, just like the poor man, just like all of us. Right? It doesn't matter. Everything that we're doing here needs to be kept in perspective. Why? Because one day it's all going to be gone. I don't know about you. I'm 56 now. I just turned 56. And those years are just, have gone by so fast. And while I've never been in, where I've never felt better about myself, you know, I'm not going to be here forever either. So we all need to keep perspective. So whether you're the humble man in tough circumstance, I mean, if you're the, yeah, if you're the brother in humble circumstances where things aren't going as the way you want them to or you're the rich person where things are going every, every the way you want them to we all need to understand what, and keep everything in perspective you know one day we're here and the next day we're gone you don't want to leave this world without having figured all that out this this is what helps us get there this is what helps us understand what life is about let's keep going so he says, blessed, happy, to be envied is the man who is patient under trial and stands up under temptation. For when he has stood the test and been approved, he will receive the victor's crown of life, which God has promised to those who love him. Wow. Again, remember right away, 
James told us that patience, endurance, and steadfastness were really important, so important. In fact, he said that we'd be lacking nothing if we had those qualities. So here he's going on again that says we're blessed, we're happy, we're to be envied when we're patient under trial and we stand up under temptation. What is he talking about? Patient under trial and standing up under temptation. What he's talking about is we win the victor's crown when we learn to stand in this world the way God wants us to stand. That's really what this is about. He's teaching us that we're supposed to live with these qualities. Endurance. This world is a hard place. If no one's told you that, let me be the first to tell you that. It's not an easy place. And I'm obviously being facetious here because we all know that life isn't easy. But if we can learn to walk on this path, endure on this path, and walk in love, and live the way God wants us to live, we get the victor's crown. But it takes, what does it take? Endurance, steadfastness, and patience and a whole heck of a lot of faith. Let's keep going. Let no one say when he is tempted, I'm tempted from God. For God is incapable of being tempted by what is evil, and he himself te tempts no one. This speaks to the character of God. I think so many people get it wrong. They don't really understand the nature of God. I've had people, I was communicating to someone on Instagram, who kind of had this idea that God lets us get into all of these bad circumstances and we are have to beg him to get us out that you know this is his plan that you know it's we're kind of pitiful people and God you know puts us actually she thought God put us into these circumstances and then we've got to beg and you know plead to get out of them and that's what it was about and I was I was like wow you've missed it you have totally missed what God what the nature of God is God is love God doesn't put us in evil circumstances well, sometimes he allows us to stay in them to teach us a lesson. He didn't cause the bad circumstances in our life. And if you think that, I need you to, to really start studying the word because God's nature is love. Yes, God teaches us. Believe me, he teaches me all the time. We would talk about a love in the Gospel of John where Jesus said, I am the branch, I am the vine, you are the branch, and my father is the vine dresser. The vine dresser prunes off all the stuff that's not bearing fruit. He, you know, prunes off the bad parts of us so that the good parts of us can, can blossom. And so God is love. And God is, is, you know, so he is not tempting us. So let no one say when he is tempted, I am tempted from God. For God is incapable of being tempted by what is evil. And he himself tempts no one. But every person is tempted when he is drawn away, enticed and baited by his own evil desire lust and passions then the evil desire when it is conceived gives birth to sin and sin when it is fully matured brings forth death do not be misled my beloved brethren every good gift and every perfect free large full gift is from above it comes down from the father of all that gives light in the shining of whom there can be no variation rising or setting or shadow cast by his turning as in an eclipse let's go back you're not tempted by God. God's not tempting you to do evil things. That's our flesh. If you don't know, and that's Satan. That's the evil in this world. We're all tempted all the time. As I talked about, temptation is not sin. It's only when you give in to that temptation does it become sin, right? He already says that here. The evil desire, when it is conceived, gives birth to sin. And the sin, when it's fully matured, brings forth death. So first of all, understand, temptation is not sin, but if you give in to your temptation, it can become sin. My idea, like my, my temptation to, be, to not be a patient person, my temptation to get frustrated and not take the right steps to help, those were temptations. We're tempted all the time to do the wrong thing. Did you ever notice that? Do you ever have like the thoughts come into your head and you're like, oh my gosh, what was I thinking? I, I would never actually say that. But you're tempted because you're angry or something. You're tempted to say the wrong thing. You're tempted not to, or how about this? You tell someone you're gonna do something and then when it comes time to do it, you don't wanna do it anymore. 
and you're tempted to maybe call them up and say something changed, I can't show up or whatever, or you're tempted to even lie. Who hasn't done, who hasn't done that, right? I've done, I, I'm thankful I don't really, I don't do that anymore, but I've done that. I've lied to people and I'm ashamed of that. Um, I'm very thankful to say I don't do that anymore. I really try to live, to, live up to my word. But even though I don't, my actions are better now, I'm still tempted at times when I'm tired or cranky or whatever, and I, I've committed myself to something, and I can be tempted to not want to follow through. The good news is I do follow through. You know, I, I really, I do the best unless, you know, it's out of my control. If I give my word, I keep it. But again, I'm still tempted. I'm, I'm, I'm tempted all the time to do the wrong thing. Who isn't? So temptation is really important because I used to, again, I used to think like, if I was tempted, that was sin, that was sin, and it isn't. We're going to be tempted all the time, he tells us that. It's only when we give in to, to sin that, I mean, give in to temptation that we have the opportunity to sin. So let's keep going. Um, and remember, okay, so we were reading every, every good gift is from above in chapter eight, uh, verse 18, and it, it was of his own free will that he gave us birth as sons by his word of truth so that we should be a kind of first fruits of his creatures, a sample of what he created to be consecrated to himself. Understand this, my beloved brethren, let every man be quick to hear, a ready listener, slow to speak, slow to take offense, and to get angry. For man's anger does not promote the righteousness God wishes and requires. Wow. <laughs> this is chapter one of James. This is why this is a book that I encourage you to read yourself, to really study, and not just read it once. I've been studying the book of James now for the, probably the past three weeks, maybe a month now, and I just read it and I resonate. I, I, I resonate, I let it resonate, and I, I just let it soak in. You know, it's, it's, it's crazy how you read these words and then God goes to work. You, he'll stop you, the Holy Spirit will stop you and teach you what you need in the moment. But again, this is chapter one, this is a lot of stuff. Already we've learned that we need to endure, we need to be steadfast, we need to be patient, we need to have faith, we need to be single-minded. I, I didn't really spend a lot of time talking about that. But again, that single-mindedness, what is he talking about? If we're in this on this planet and we're let's say we're focusing on money everything's about money for us and we're driving because that's a big thing here right on this planet we live on if we're just focused on money and the love of money and all that kind of stuff and we say we love God well we're kind of we're kind of split here right we're kind of pursuing two things we're kind of you know money is our driver or, or our job or you know we anything could be you know become like an idol is what we're, what we're talking about here so he needs we said we need to be single-minded so if we have and, and he talked about faith right if we want wisdom we need to ask for ask for it with faith without any doubt because otherwise we're a man with two minds if we doubt god if we doubt our faith then we're double-minded is what he's saying and that's that's a really important concept so what we need to do is we need to keep god first place and why do we need to keep god first place because God is love and if you bring God into every circumstance with you then you're gonna live the life that God wanted you to live what does that mean what does that look like in our everyday life bringing God in keeping God first place means we filter our thoughts our words and our actions through the Word of God it's actually it's actually simple once you it's a simple concept harder to put into practice for me, I've, you know, I'm 10 years now into studying God's Word, which seems like a long time and not long at all. It's funny how that is. I'm really good in my thinking. Um, no, I'm really good at my, in my words. I've gotten so much better. I still have a distance to travel, but I'm so much better than I used to be in filtering my words through what God wants me to say and my actions as well. But I still fail every day. 
Let me give you an example today. I went to the mall with my husband. My daughter was looking for a homecoming dress. And my husband said, let's go to Starbucks and, and grab a coffee while we're waiting. And so I went and we had a very rude person. And, um, and instead of, you know, at first I was like, okay. And I tried to smile, whatever. And then she was continued to be rude. And I said to my husband, I'm like, wow, was she rude or something? And I took like 10 steps away and I said, oh my gosh, that's not how I'm supposed to react. Here I am sharing a video about walking in love, living life the way God wants us to live, reading his word and letting it guide us. And I just failed in my reaction to that young woman who was obviously either unhappy, having a bad day, who knows? Someone could have died in her family and she had to be at work. It could have been something bad. And I did nothing to help her. I allowed myself to get agitated. Okay, 15 steps is all it took before God showed me that I was wrong, but I failed, right? And so I repented and I, you know, I need to try harder. But that's what it means to allow, to live God's way, to surrender our life to his word and to use it in how we think and how we speak and how we act. And when we do that, then we have the opportunity to, to begin to walk the way God wants us to walk on this planet, to walk in love, to walk as Jesus did. That's why all of this is so important. So that's where we're going to leave off today. I feel like I put a lot of information into this uh, short segment, and I hope that you're getting something out of this with me. I hope you're enjoying this journey, and I hope you will actually pick up your Bible and read, read along with me. Contemplate some of these verses and, and you know, read these verses and just let them kind of soak in, contemplate them. Ask, ask God what he wants to tell you through his word here. And again, you know, this is, this is chapter one and there's a lot more to come and we're not even through chapter one, but I'm hoping you're enjoying these lessons because I'm enjoying sharing them with you. And I hope, um, look forward to some feedback and, uh, look forward to the next time. Have a great day. God bless.